Bush, and he joins us on the Harbor One Hotline bright and early this morning. Hey, Brad Foe. Oh, let's go. You can barely see the palm trees through the fog. I, 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 the, the, <laughs> the adversity that I have to take, deal with right now, guys, well, is awful. you're going to miss the storm. We got a, the Curtis says a banger coming on Wednesday Ooh. night, and uh, so like three to six inches. So you're, uh, uh, you enjoy it while you can. Yeah, me and Curtis are weather it the same way, exact same way. <laughs> so with palm trees and sunshine. Yeah. Yes, sir. So um, lots to unpack here. I, I, uh, I'll start with Curtis's lead this morning, uh, which was that uh, John Henry spoke to The Athletic and uh, essentially said that there is a false narrative going around with regard to those who may have been uh, expressing, expressing their displeasure uh, at the Winter Classic with a boo or two. Um, uh, it, is it your feeling that in some cases maybe uh, maybe John Henry is a little bit out of touch with how the fans are actually feeling? Uh, yes, and I, th- I think that you have a case where at the Winter Classic, the Winter Classic was his, I'm going to get out there, I'm going to speak to the fans, this is where the time I'm going to do that. It didn't go well for him. And now, as we know, every year we have the bench where he gets out there for 20 minutes in front of the media once a year and basically takes questions, says Pablo Sandoval's body fat's at 17% or we screwed up John Lester signing, whatever it is. And now, I think because of the winter weekend thing, and he was booed and there was sort of that impact, he didn't do that yesterday. And instead, they they replaced that with this bizarre, we're going to give certain outlets the opportunity to submit email questions, and then here he's going to respond to them at his whim, which he did, and it, even that didn't come off well. So, listen, John Henry, I like the fact that he can't help himself. He's honest, he's genuine, and everything else. But at this point, and where the Red Sox are at, with, the, with their lot in life, I'm sorry, and I told this to Sam Kennedy when he was on the show yesterday. When you're at this point, when you're in last place, you guys know this, in Boston, I don't care if the fans want it or not. This is checking off the box of the owner has to step up. We were screaming for Jeremy Jacobs when the Bruins were bad. Mm -hmm. Last year, we were screaming for Robert Kraft when that wasn't going well. This is just how it works. And in Boston, in my book... That's how it should work, and it, it, it didn't work that way. Bradful, it, when you look at it, isn't the biggest thing need to be, though, more about the direction that they're going in? You know, forget about the boos and all that other nonsense. We know that the team was bad last year, but don't fans want to know, okay, what is the direction you're going in? Yeah, absolutely. Like, listen, I can scream and yell about him not sitting on a bench for 20 minutes. That doesn't make a difference. The biggest thing is, is are you still spending money? Are you going in the right direction? But you, to your, your uh, point, Wiggy, that you have to, if you're going to spend the money, you have to tell us what direction you're going to go in. Because I can tell you right now, as I sit down to write this, this is not like anything I've ever seen. You walk into that Red Sox clubhouse, and it, you are struck with how few marquee names there are. Now, that doesn't mean that they're going to be bad, but it is dramatically different. They are taking a different tone, a different take. And, you know, and I think that we have to get some explanations. Hein Bloom is explaining it. He thinks this is the way to do it. That's fine. But for John Henry, he can't just say, sit there and say, well, look at, look at the payroll. We're paying all this money. Well, also, the people who are buying the tickets, who are listening to the broadcast, who are watching the broadcast, they want to also know who are the guys that they are paying to see. Because as I said, when you walk in that clubhouse, there is Raphael Devers in the corner and, and then everybody it. and everybody else. Yeah. And it, so when you say Heim thinks this is the way to do it, that that means what? What you know, essentially you're going to pay one guy and then you're going to cobble together the the rest of the roster, right? Yeah, well, he said to us yesterday uh, when we were asking him about this, because I said, I said, listen, I walk in that clubhouse and I am struck with how few marquee names, and I get it, you don't run isolations for outfielders, you need a lot of good players. And the one thing that struck me about what he said, he said, I, we just feel that the pieces fit a lot better than they did last year. Now, that's that sounds good, but well, What boy, does that mean, though? It, well, exactly. I mean, you know what that means? What 
when the pieces fit perfectly, it was in Tampa. That was that was that kind of puzzle. The problem is, and the problem it was, is that in Tampa you had this tidal wave of talent just coming and coming and coming and coming. Well, okay, we don't know if that's sitting here with the Red Sox. That's the problem. We can have this dynamic, but the other part of it, which Tampa had and the Red Sox don't, is the proven, really top prospects that are going to help every single year. And that's what he's banking on. Bradfo, when you talk about the names that may not be marquee but come up a lot, came up a lot last season, Brian Bayo coming up again this season, has already been shut down because he has, I think, right forearm soreness or something. What's the future like in your mind for him? We've got Pedro Martinez talking about him a lot already in spring training. What do you think this guy can do for the Red Sox down the road? I, I, he could be good, but he, again, Cordy, this is a, one of many, many guys. If he threw yesterday, it was encouraging because I guess when you throw a baseball and don't have Tommy John, and that's a good day. <laughs> and so, but he, he's he's one of these guys I'm talking about. Yeah, you know, he has potential, but he better be good. Him, Casas, Mar- Marcelo Meyer, go down the list. of the, If you want this plan to work, a guy like Brian Bayo better work absolutely and and the whole thing with pedro i love pedro pedro you guys know pedro's the best right he's great to talk to but that's because he's working with a guy like i remember he used to work with a guy named ruby de la rosa and it's like all of a sudden ruby he said ruby de la rosa reminds me of roger clemens he said that and so i'm like and so i'm like this just pump the bra- it's it's a nice spring shredding storyline but at the same time it's like okay i mean this this is the same thing hold for all of this stuff like they these guys have to go out and prove it and do it and and for the young guys that's unfortunate because that's a lot of pressure to put on them well maybe a strategy over there though it might be like hey look <laughs> uh pedro's here uh pedoria is hitting fungos uh, take a look <laughs> take a look over there and remember the glory days well, and I, I, uh don't pay that uh, like I mean, uh, here's a shiny what, object over there which what, is a what, bunch what, of guys that we're bringing what, 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 what are the first things i said to pedroia i said hey are you gonna get in the cajun head he's like no because if i do they might ask me to be on the team <laughs> oh, didn't pedro like address the team the other yesterday yeah yeah i mean it's it's it can't right. hurt right i mean like all of this can't hurt but oh. at the at the yeah. <laughs> closed door meeting though yeah, with Pedro two, and Alex Cora, I'm two, like, oh, I would love to be a fly on the wall. Two, two, 2023 Red Sox colon, it can't hurt. Right. <laughs> so under Greg's under Greg's plan, this means that John Henry's flying to Ukraine today. But um, <laughs> in all sincerity, though, Brad Fo, it doesn't seem to me that John Henry enjoys owning this team. It seems like a massive headache. What began as a passion has devolved into a headache. And now, which is the ultimate low of lows, the Boston Red Sox owner is part of an economic reform committee to slow crazy spending in baseball. Is that right? Uh, yes, I think that. Hey, hey, in other words, hey, Steve Cohen, stop making us look bad. So uh, I, I think that I think that you know that's half true, Chris. I mean that. This is what we want to know. I mean, this is one of the reasons why we would love to talk to him, just to get sort of that vibe from him about where he's coming from, because that narrative certainly out, is out there. Now, we also see things like, oh, he flew down to Dominican to help seal the Rafael Devers deal, behind the scenes, this and that. But I don't think there's any question, if you juxtapose this John Henry versus what we were used to for three quarters of his tenure, it is different. And, and like I said... If for no no other example, just that that one get together with the media every spring training, this was part of it. And now I I honestly think he's seventy three years old. He's saying, hey, listen, like I'm owning the team. I'm paying. I'm spending a lot of money for the team. I'm putting the team in a position to succeed. I just don't want to deal with this part of it. Where that just wasn't even an option for like I said for three quarters of his ownership tenure. Uh, Let me get to the important question for me. Mm. How much time do you think the pitch clock and and, uh, the other rule changes will shave off the average game? Uh, Ah, a lot. And I, but more importantly, this is this is you are not going to be able to uh, sit up in the suite and and drink like three Trulies in between pitches. (laughs) You know, it's this is this is the the biggest (laughs) the biggest thing is that. The, the, it's the pace of the game, right? 
I mean, it's going to cut off time, but it's going to feel quicker. And and it's like every other rule change in baseball. Everyone screams and yells about it. Then they get used to it and like, oh, man, this is actually a good thing. You and like we'll, it, right? And how, of course. Yeah. Like, how can you know? And, I, and when the players were yelling about it and continue to scream about it, number one, they don't want to be told what to do. And number two, they don't want to be told what to do by the commissioner, a guy they hate. So that that's why they, they have this enormous problem with it. But you ask anybody that like this helps. Now, when it counts the most in the seventh and eighth inning and ninth innings of important games, we're gonna have to see. But still, uh, yeah, this this is no question. It is it is weird watching like clocks everywhere you turn. Like the only the only neon sign I'm used to is when I walk into Twin Peaks and it says twenty nine point nine degrees on the beer, <laughs> and now I walk around the corner and there and there is and there is a clock at every turn showing me twenty seconds and counting down. Uh, also, I think twenty nine point nine is the BMI for most people who are eating at, 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 at Twin, at Twin hey, Peaks. Hey, BMI <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brad Foe, it's always great to talk to you, and we will do that every single Tuesday all season long. Correct? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to it. I love the great game of baseball, as you guys know, and I love you guys. So, uh, so let's go. Baseball isn't boring. All right, thank you, Brad Foe. There Thanks. He is.